Welcome to your moment of growth. Welcome to your season of grace. Your decision to listen to God's servant is an action for absolute acceleration. Buckle up, tighten your seatbelt, and get set to learn Christ and develop your spirit as you listen to Pastor Lale Rushji, God's emissary for transformation, a steward and custodian of God's divine mysteries. Remain blessed. It has been titled Graceful November, and uh, I'll be sharing on um, what I titled um, Grace and Graces. I think I think they came, the team came like two months before, before even now, or over one month ago. Um, I'm going to be laying the foundation today, and then we're going to continue um, on the other weeks that we have to spend. All right. Um, the Bible says in the book of um, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 6, Paul was talking to his son Timothy. He said, he said that if you instruct the brethren in these things, if you put them in remembrance, I think I, think I prefer KJV. I'm used to KJV, but I'm getting used to new KJV now. I think what KJV says is that if you put the brethren in remembrance of these things, you will be a, what? a good minister of our Lord Jesus Christ, nourished up in the world of faith and good doctrine whereunto you have attained. So one of my work as a pastor, or the work of any pastor, is not to come and tell you something that is new. In fact, the biggest work to do is to tell you the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Martin Luther King said to his church members, said that, I teach you justification by faith every Sunday because you forget every week. When you leave church on Sunday morning, or Sunday afternoon, or whatever, people go into the world, and maybe on Monday they still remember, by Tuesday they are forgetting already. So imagine that, it, that the next week, they hear something new entirely again. Because human beings, that's how we are. Because we have other things saturating our lives. So he tells them the same thing almost every Sunday. Next Sunday, brethren, you are justified by faith again. Say, say to them next Sunday again, because they will forget. And that's the most important thing to say to the believer. Or one of the most important things to say to the believer. Paul said in Philippians 3 verse 1, he says, finally, my brethren, he says, reject in the Lord again. He says, he said that, for me to say to you again, for me, it is not grievous, and for you, it is safe. To say the same thing over and over again, for you, it is safe. For me, it's not grievous. I love new things, though. But as a pastor, you must preach old things. But I would like to teach it in new ways. Hallelujah. Sometimes during the um, lockdown, um, I, I thought on this thing called grace. How many of you? How many of you follow that series? After the first week, so, so somebody called me and said that I can't wait for next week to come fast, fast. Part one, two, three, four, five is on. Um, what do we call it now? On our podcast, you can get it. It's free, and if you want it live, you can get it after the service. Part one, two, three, four, five. Fantastic message. We picked up grace from, from where grace started from, from the Old Testament. From, we, 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 we touch everything about, around grace. But today, we are going to be touching some of those things, and, but we are going to be going into a different dimension entirely. But one thing we will not do is that we will not go into the Old Testament. We will be touching grace from the eyes of Jesus. We will be touching grace from what Paul told us in Romans, in Galatians. In what the writer of Hebrews said about grace. Based on what Peter said about grace. You see, the word grace remains one of the most used words in the body of Christ. Will you be there next week by the grace of God? <laughs> the word grace is used all over the world among Christians. Yet, the word grace is also the most abused word in the body of Christ. It's the most misused word among Christians. Now, most people use the word grace and they don't even know what the word grace means. So we're going to be looking to the word grace very well. Now, I, I, let me say that, like I, I said um, earlier when we had the series then, that grace is, the, is one of the core themes of Christianity. If we remove grace from Christianity, it will be a race without God in it. So some people say that grace is God in the race. The word grace is mentioned 170 times in the Bible. 170 times in the Bible. 
please be as attentive as possible. I, I won't be doing um, preaching, preaching. I want to teach the word. I want to teach you the word. So it's good that you are writing. If you don't, if you don't have a pen or whatever, you can ask the ushers. They will find one for you. So you are writing. You are, you are part of this. Let's interact together. One, how many times in the Bible? Tell me now. How many times? 170 times. Now out of the 170, we have 39. 39 in the Old Testament. In the entire Old Testament. And the Old Testament, there was no Christianity then. So you can see that the more of a new team, Christianity team, 131 times in the New Testament. Out of the 131 times, there are only four in the Gospel. That is Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Only four. One, two, three, four. Only four times in the whole Gospel. And you know in the Gospel, there was Jesus, but there was no Christianity. I hope you know that. Jesus was not a Christian. I hope you know that. <laughs> now, the word grace, there are only 11 in the Acts of Apostle. Acts of Apostle is not a book written to Christians. It's a book written about, about what the believers were doing, about Christians. The book written to Christians, you will see it there. Paul letter to the Philippians, to the Christians. Letter to the Colossians, to the Christians. Letter to the Romans, the Christians. Thessalonians, the Christians. Timothy, is not a Christian book, it's written to, written to a pastor, to a young pastor. Titus, young pastor. Philemon, young pastor and someone in the ministry. Jude, the book of Jude, the book of First John, Second John, Third John, First Peter, Second Peter, we are written to Christians, but Jewish Christians. The book of Hebrews, written to Christians, but Jewish Christians. So some of those things, most of those things apply to us as Christians, but some do not apply to you. For example, when the book of Hebrews says that, um, that, I think crucifying Jesus Christ the second time, he's talking about those who go back to temple sacrifices. Those who go back to slaughter rams and all of that. And you are saying that what Jesus has done is not enough. But you are we crucifying something. So they were, for example, when he says that, um, that for those who have heard about the gospel before, and then they now change, that, that there is no heaven for them. You know, there, there are quite a number of things in the book of Hebrews that are not written to other believers outside of the Jewish people. Do you understand? Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me ask you a question. The law of Moses, was it written to you? Do you understand now? It was not written to you. It is not your business. All those things are written for us and not to us. The books written to you in the Bible, there are very few. <laughs> very few. But the books written to us in the Bible explains everything that are not written to you. So when you read what is written, when you read what is written for her, for you, and you don't understand, go to the one written to you, you understand. Let me explain to you. The Old Testament includes the law, the prophet, and the Psalms. New Testament does not start from Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. New Testament is the fulfillment of the laws, prophets, and the Psalms. Let me explain again. Please, don't miss me. Old Testament includes what? The laws, the prophets, and the Psalms. What is the Testament? A Testament is a will. Right? It's a will. The same way, the Old Testament is not, didn't start from Genesis. Genesis is the book of creation. Moses was on the mountain when he saw everything that happened in Genesis and he was writing it down. He was not born then. God showed him everything. He wrote it down. The Old Testament started somewhere in Exodus. Not Exodus 1. Somewhere in Exodus. Are we together? So, New Testament started after the testator, Jesus Christ, died. In the Old Testament, the testator was an animal. When the animal, animal was killed, Moses said, this is the blood of the testament. And he sprinkled blood on, the, on, 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 um, on certain things, purify certain things. Now, will you agree with me that or will you say that Jesus Christ being alive, that was the lamp for us, 
being alive, can you can, could the testament have fired while he was alive? No. Even the book of Hebrews says that a testament is not in force until the death of the testator. Jesus Christ is the testator. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, fulfillment of what they were saying about Jesus all through the Old Testament. When you now come to Philippians, our book, Colossians, Ephesians, Galatians, Corinthians, Romans, Thessalonians, they were now explaining the scriptures. Explaining what happened with Jesus. Explaining what happened in the Old Testament. If you can sit down well with the word, and you can sit down well with good teaching of the word, you will understand the Bible very well. Are we together? Are you sure about that? So, back to where we were before. The remaining 116 times was where it was speaking to us as Christians. So grace is a core theme. It's a major theme of Christianity. The book of Romans, plenty grace. Corinthians, plenty. Plenty. Galatians, grace. In fact, Peter, James, John. You see, every book that Paul wrote in the Bible, all the books he wrote, all the books he wrote, he started with grace and peace. He ended with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. All the books he wrote, except the book of, um, I think the book of Hebrews. The book, in the book of Hebrews, <clears throat> he didn't sign in with grace, but he signed out with grace. In the book of Romans, he didn't sign in with grace, he signed out with grace, because of the kind of people that he was talking to. Or maybe Paul forgot. <laughs> I think that Paul cannot forget. He knew what he was doing. So grace is a core theme of Christianity. So we say grace. I can't hear you. Say grace. Core theme. Okay, maybe I'm... Core. C-O-R-E. Theme. T-H-E-M-E. Say grace. It's a core theme of Christianity. So if you check Luke chapter 2 and verse 40, after Jesus was born, the Bible says that that Jesus who was born, there was something about him that distinguished him. It says, and the child grew and became what? Strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom. But there was something upon him. And the grace of God was upon him. That's what Luke said about Jesus. Look at what John said about Jesus. John chapter 1 and verse 14. John chapter 1 and verse 14. It says, and the word became flesh. The word. Who was the word? Talk to me now. Or uh, who is the word? So this word, Jesus. Now, it was in the Old Testament, it was called the word. In the knee, it was called Jesus. Or it's called Jesus today. When God was creating the world, he, used, he created the world with Jesus. But it was the world there. It was not human. It was not in flesh. <laughs> I've heard people say that, ah, eh, eh, they were in heaven. Jesus not, God has said that, who will go? In Jamaica, yeah, will you go? He said, I will not go. I will go and die. I don't want to go and die. In Jamaica, God, will you go? I will not go. The son answered that. Oh. Ah, Fabu. Fabu, Fabu. There was nothing, there, is, there was nothing like that in the Bible. In the, in the Old Testament, Jesus was not flesh. He was the Word. And He was living. It was the word that God was using to create the whole entire world. Do you understand that? So, he did not become flesh until at this point, when he was born by Mary. So the Bible says, and the world became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld what? His glory. Such as the only begotten of the Father. Full of what? Grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. If there was something that Jesus was full of, it was grace. If there was something, one thing was full of, it was grace and truth. The next verse, verse go to verse 16. Verse 16 now says, and of what is fullness. And of his what? He was full of what? 
and truth, right? So, what do you think you can tap from him? And truth. Do you understand now? It is what I have that I can give. If I have in my house plenty biscuits, I am full of what? Biscuits. Maybe and sweet. If you come of my fullness, I will give unto you biscuit for biscuit. The Bible says, and of his fullness, we have what? We have all received grace for grace. Hallelujah. That is what he had. The, the next verse now explains what some, someone else had. His name, Moses. It says, the law was given by who? Moses. So all that the, Moses could give you was the law. Because that is what he had to give. Right? He didn't have grace to give. Moses did not have grace to give. All he could give you was the law. So the law was given by who? Moses. But, you know, when, when you see the word board, it means that there is a redirection. It is not a continuation. It is a redirection. All this while, as we were going, we were seeing the law. The law. A, a point came. But, done. Truth came by Jesus Christ. It was not law and truth, though. You can only add truth with grace. You don't add truth with the law. The law is true, but it's not the truth. The, it is true that you are short, but that is not the truth about you. The truth about you is that there is something inside of you, and it's Jesus. The life of God is in you. Now, truth is what is more prevalent or has more supremacy over what is true. What is true is that, ah, that guy is still lying. He's still finding it difficult to, to, to say the truth. But the truth, the truth is that when God sees him, eh? when God sees him, when God sees him, he sees the picture of Jesus. When God sees him, what God says to him himself is this. He who became sin. He who knew no sin. Became sin. That, that CD, that tire, that being paid, can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So there is a difference between what is true and what is the truth. The law, it happened for me. It is true. But the law was not the truth. Grace. It's the truth of God. Can someone say, hey, amen to that? You see, let me add something to this. The law can never take you into your promised land. Never. Never. When God called Moses, God never told Moses you would take them into the promised land. If Moses had taken them there, it was Jara. He was not ordained for such. Because the law was not made for such. Somebody had to take on the baton. His name, Joshua. Do you know what Joshua means? Joshua means Yeshua. Yeshua means Jesus. So God was explaining something to us that we were not seeing. That Moses, the law giver, could not have taken you into your promised land. You can only enter into your rest by, the, by Yeshua, by Joshua, by Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, what was written in the Old Testament were written for us to learn what is going to happen in the New Testament. Only Yeshua can take you there. Only Yeshua can give you. See, if, you if you read the book of Joshua, you, you will not see you will not see law, 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 law all over the book of Joshua. No. No. God told, God told Joshua, see, as I was with Moses, I said, I will be with you. He said, everywhere the soul of your future, I have given you. He don't say I will give you. He said, I have given you. Mama talked about it to me. He said, I have given you. He said, anywhere the soul of your feet step upon, I have given it to you. At the point, he said, he said that, he said, you, 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 here come. He said, now I will begin to exhort you before the children of Israel. He said, he said that they will see you so high. They will, they, will, they will bless you so high. What Moses struggled for, Joshua got by his, that is grace. What Moses was struggling for, 40 days, 40 nights, prayer and fasting on the mountain, Joshua got by his. He was entering the territories. He was Jordan, river, parted. Wall of Jericho fell down flat. Ah, ah. Some kings came together, five kings, to come and fight. The, you know, a, 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 a particular tribe became, became slaves. 
to them, to them Joshua. Because he saw that if, if we don't become slaves to them, they will destroy us. So the five, kings, five kingdoms were going to fight against that particular country. And they were like, please, help us. So they went out, they finished them. The book of Joshua, it does not talk about a lawgiver. It talks like the book of a savior. Jesus, Yeshua, Joshua. Hallelujah. Say, I have grace. Say, I have grace. Oh. So grace is the gospel that Jesus brought. When a man enters into a street, I appreciate those who preach the gospel. Anywhere in the world, I appreciate it. But when a man enters into a street, or gets into a bus, or into a market, and the mic, and say, you fornicators, you liars, repent. If you don't, you will go to hell. That man is not preaching the gospel that Jesus brought. He's still inside Moses. Or the man is taking Moses and Jesus as his diet. He will eat Jesus. He will now drink Moses. It does not work like it cannot. It cannot work like that. The, it didn't say that. It didn't say that the law came by Moses and grace and truth. No, it's not, it's not a mixture. See, the law came. The law was given by Moses. Say, but, but, grace and truth came through Jesus. Came through Jesus. Jesus did not come to re-give the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law. What does fulfill mean? It means to put an end to. It means to finish it. The Bible says, as touching the law, say Jesus, no, as touching righteousness, say Jesus is the hand of the law. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you a lot of things. But we don't have the time for it. I will just show you a few things and then we'll continue the next time. Hebrews 13 verse 9. Well, let's, let's go to Galatians 4. Galatians 1 verse 6. Galatians 1 verse 6. Galatians 1 verse 6. Let me show you some things in the Bible. So the ah, pastor is just telling us what he thinks. I don't do it all. Do it all. But me, I don't do it. I will show you. In fact, our problem is that we show Bible too much. We don't have ideas. What's your idea, Pastor? I do have idea. Let me check what the Bible says, and I will give it to you. That's what we do in the Kings Up. Simple. Let's be together. I marvel that you are so soon removed from Him that called you into what? The grace of Christ unto another gospel. I marvel. I, I, I'm wondering that you are so soon removed from the one that called you. That means that you were in him before. You were in the one that called you into, into what? What did he call you into? The grace of Christ. And you are now removed into what? Another gospel. Listen to this. There is no gospel of deliverance. There is no gospel of, um, of relationship. There is no gospel of, um, of business. And that pastor is... is no, there's no gospel of giving birth to children. There is no gospel of, of please give me all those gospel of, the, of, of, um, of, of cause breaking. There is no gospel of Holy Spirit. There is no gospel of fasting and prayer. The only gospel is the gospel of grace. All that teachings and doctrines are built around grace. He says, you are so soon removed from the one that has called you into the grace of Christ, unto what? Another gospel. Please move further. He says that which is not another that means that it's not outside the body of Christ. So. <laughs> it's, not, it's not from God. It's not Ogun. No. It's still in church. It says, but there, there be some that trouble you and they will what? They will pervert. They will corrupt the gospel of Christ. How do you corrupt something? By removing it? No. You don't corrupt something by removing it. You corrupt by adding jara to it or adding something to it. Poison is not served alone. Nobody drinks poison like that, except you want to just personally go and die. How do, if, you want to, if you want to poison somebody, how do you do it? Talk to me, church. You, put, you only put poison inside what? Something that is what? Sweet. So you say, that, ah, Jesus Christ came to give grace, oh, but when you add but to it, we don't want anymore. We don't want anymore. So let us balance it. We don't balance it. 
What you need is inside grace. You don't balance it. Eh, but if you say only grace alone, people will and sin, no. Grace keeps you from sinning. Over time. Don't add a lot to it. No, you don't mix it. Leave grace alone. It's enough. The Bible didn't say that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ um, 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 was full of grace and truth and then there is a small jar of lot to it. No. 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 So he was full of grace and truth. And all that we can receive from him is what grace for grace. Can you say glory to God? Amen. Shout glory to God one more time. Amen. Move further, please. Verse 8. Look at this. Look at what Paul said. Paul, 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 Paul. Paul said that, but even if we, even if we, me, Paul, Apollos, Silas, Barnabas, or what? Or an angel from, it's not angel from, from Africa or America. Someone was praying in America, I was like, we receive angel from, 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 from Africa, angel from Asia. How do you receive angel from America and Asia? Do angels live in America and Asia? Say, but if we or an angel from heaven preach, preach what? Any other gospel than what we have what? Received. Let him be what? A cost. Paul put himself on a cost that in case we come back and say that, <laughs> uh, let's add some jaya to it. So let us be cost. Next verse, please. Verse 9. As we have said before, know what I am saying. I am not lidaling. Let me say again, if we, me, Paul, and my, and my guys, Epaphroditus, Epaphras, Tiston, Titus, Timothy, if we come back and tell you that, I know I don't know, I don't know, that there is other things, other things, if we come back and import another gospel to it, let us be accursed. Now said in verse 9, say in verse 10 that am I, am I, do you think I'm made to play? Do you think I'm made to please man? I'm made to please God. The only gospel is the gospel of grace. Talk about that. Uh, brother, go and discover your own gospel. You have your own gospel. Paul has his own gospel, it's grace. No, it's not Paul's gospel. Paul personalized it and made it his gospel. You should do the same thing. It's your gospel, it's my gospel. It's my gospel. This grace is my gospel. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's the grace, not, not of Paul, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. See what Hebrews 13 verse 9 says. Hebrews 13 verse 9. It says, don't be carried away. By what? Hey, please, please, read it together, please. Why don't you go? Don't be carried away by what? By various and strange doctrines. For it is what? Good. That the heart be established by what? By grace. And not by meat or by food. Which have no profit. Establish your heart. By grace. That's the only gospel. Any gospel that disconnects you from grace is Antichrist. Any gospel. Any gospel that tells you, those grace people don't do, don't do grace, is Antichrist. If I prefer to do too much grace, than to do no grace at all. And there can't be too much grace. Is that grace or no grace? If it's too much grace, I will show you what too much grace means. You will be excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. Acts 20 verse 24. Acts 20 and verse 24. Look at what Paul said. He said, but none of these things move me. None of these things move me. Neither what... Count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might what? Finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have what? Received of the Lord Jesus Christ to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. The only gospel. The only gospel. So in that gospel, what do we teach? It's like grace. In that gospel, what do we teach? Verse 32. 32. 32, please. 32. What do we teach in that gospel? And now, brethren, I what? Look at it very well. This one here, look at it very well. I commend to what? Unto who? And to what? What I recommend to you is only what? The word of his grace. What we teach is the word of, the, of his grace. If we add judgment to our message, we are preaching another gospel. 
if we add judgment to our message, we are teaching another gospel. Is it your place to judge? Brother, you will go to hell. You don't have the right to say that. You are shewo, you are panshaga only. Oh my Lord, someone will die. Jesus will put you alone. But this will go. That is not the gospel. That is not the gospel. That is not, that is anti Jesus. That is exactly what Jesus did not bring. That is exactly what they came to correct. You don't preach like that. You talk about the love of God. You, we bring the love of God to them. He says, why you yet sinner? Christ died for you. When you were enemies of God, he died for you. The gospel is brother. This one is difficult though. Let me say it. Say, brother, do you know that God is no longer counting your sin against you? Huh? Ah, pastor. That's never see. Second Corinthians number five. Please go there. Let's see what he says. Verse what no? Is it seventeen or eighteen? It's not, it's not seventeen, it's eighteen. Verse 18, nineteen, nineteen. Five verse nineteen. Do you know what the word wit means? No, w I T. In my in my Bible it says to shout. It says to shout or to roar that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not what? Imputing their sin on them. What does impute mean? So count. Please check, check. Another version, please. New KJV, NIV. Wait, 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 wait. Look at this one. If it was God, personally what? Present in Christ. Reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself, not counting up or holding against men their trespasses, but what? Casting them. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. And committing to us the word, the message of reconciliation. That's our gospel. That's our gospel. That's the gospel of Christ. Hey, the reason why God, Nigeria is this bad is because God is angry with Nigeria. People are sinning in Nigeria. People are sinning more in other countries. God counted your sin against Jesus. If He has done that, hear this and tell God if you meet Him that God, you are unrighteous to count my sin against me. You cannot punish my son for my sin and punish me again. It's not possible. I get what I'm saying. Imagine I am the court of law and they are like, guy, you have killed people, you have done don't, don't, don't that. Then somebody came and said, please, can you come? He was like, I didn't do it, but I will die for him. The moment he says that, I am free. Am I right? Uh, no, no, the pastor. Is the sin that you committed before you became born again? Where is that in the Bible? You are the one adding to the gospel. You are the one. You see, the 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 the, the complexity of Christianity is in its simplicity. The reason why Christianity became complex is because it's too simple. They didn't say go and bring this, go and bring that. Because people like that one know. They fast for seven days. They're like, okay, <laughs> they are saying something now. But if I say, if I say that, Pastor, <laughs> I, I am scared though. <laughs> they told me, told me that I would die. I, I'm even seeing death in my dream. Say, come, let me pray for you. No, I won't even pray for you. I won't pray for you at all. Let me show you in the Bible. You cannot die. And I show you three or four verses. They're like, he didn't give me anything. So, can you pass off for Come on, show me any word you need. Come on, show me any word you need. I don't know. And that is Christianity. That is our deliverance. The word from bondage, the word of his grace. He says, What? Go back to Acts 20, verse 32. He says, Now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you your what? inheritance among those who are sanctified. Hello, hello. If your father is a wealthy man and your father dies, how do you know your inheritance? By personal prayer? By what? You read the will. As believers, we only know our inheritance by reading our will, which is the word of God. That's how you do it. So how do you now get the will? Or how do you now get what you have in the will? You now enforce it in prayer. And there are some you don't even struggle about. You just declare words. I have this in the name of Jesus. 
I walk in victory in the name of Jesus. Oh, this is who I am. Oh, glory to God. I have health in the... Jesus has done it for me. He finished the work. He finished the work for me. Sir, I have it already. I have it already. Hallelujah. This one and that one, and that one that you see that you will die. Which one do you prefer? Which one do you prefer? Hmm. Pastor, you don't know, don't know anything. The Bible says the kingdom of God shall violent violence and the violence taken by force. The Bible says, hear this. The Bible says from the time of John the Baptist until now. When was that now? Is it now? Years ago. The kingdom of God, let me say to you, does not suffer violence anymore. It was then. You see, from the time of John the Baptist until now. You don't even, you don't even until now. Time of John the Baptist. It's not time of Elijah. Because then there was no kingdom of God. On John the Baptist until now. The kingdom of violence. And you, you are making that now your own now. Kill on share. If you know what it is, the kingdom of God survived violent assault. Now, it does not suffer violent again. It is grace that it suffers, that it gives. So, when you see us praying and we are sweating and all of that, it's not because we want to go and, we want to go and um, win, or we want to go and um, be a great causes. No. We are doing it for nations. We are doing it for kingdoms. We are doing it for destinies. We are doing it, if it's for ourselves, we are doing it to lay hold on what we have already. The, Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight. It's not a bad fight. Lay hold on what? Eternal life. To which you have been called. Lay hold on it. You hold it. You hold it, pastor. You hold it, man of God. You hold it. You lay hold on it. How do you lay hold on something? Say, I have it already. That's what you, how, how you lay hold on something. Sir, can, can you come and lay hold on this microphone? Ha! You lay hold on Give it to me. You lay hold on it. That is how you have it. Yes, sir. He says, the way to fight is by laying hold. Do you understand that now? Bible is too simple. Yes, sir. If you will not have what you think to it. The moment you have what you think to eat, or what they have told you to eat, it becomes complex. Thank you very much. You can go and sit down. Thank you very much, sir. The moment you had what they told you in your primary school to eat, or what you read in the book of Bible story to eat, you have finished the Bible. You have finished the Bible. Don't worry, I'm watching my time. I have not preached one over eight of the message. But I weird my time hands we end. I'm not rushing. I don't mind if we will continue this into December. I don't mind. I will, we will take it one step after another. Acts 13 verse 43. Acts 13 verse 43. Look at this. You see, Paul and Apostle and, 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 um, and um, Barnabas, they were here teaching the gospel. And when they finished teaching the gospel, some people came to them. Said, and the congregation had broken up. Many of the Jews and the devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas and speaking to them persuaded them to continue in what? The only thing to continue in is the grace of God for the believer. The grace of God. Grace, uh, we are saved by grace and that's all. No! We stay in grace. We sit in grace. We abide in grace. We live in grace. Hallelujah. In grace. Never turn back. Never turn back. Say, now I know grace. So what must we do? You see, Christianity is not what must we do. Christianity is what has been done. In the law, it was do, 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 do. Christianity, it is done. So we only lay hold on what has been done for us. We only come to know what has been done for us according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness that we have access to by what? By knowledge. By knowledge. Hallelujah. Is someone getting blessed this morning? Are you sure about that? Are you learning the word this morning? All right. All right. So you don't start and continue in the law. See what 
port, port to them. Galatians 3 verse 1. See what Paul told them. Paul said, Oh foolish Galatians. Why did he call them foolish? Why? Because they were not, they were not good people. Because they were fighting themselves. No. Say, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Ah, ah. He even called them a jet. Say, who has bewitched you? That you should not obey what? Talk to me, the what? What's the truth? What's the truth? The gospel of grace. Who has bewitched you? And you should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus was clearly portrayed among you as what? Crucified. Move please. Move please. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith? Verse 3. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit in grace. In grace. Are you now being made perfect by the law? Verse 4. Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it is indeed in vain. Verse 5. Therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracle among you, does he do it by the work of the law or by the hearing of faith? Say, uh, Pastor, this is why, uh, uh, brother, this is why uh, you, 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 you cannot pray for yourself when you are sick. It's because you are sinning too much. See, I'm not here to tell you that, that you're going to be sinning. You should know me. But I want to show you what the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ means. It is not, you cannot add anything to it. You cannot. You, your addition will make no sense. Imagine pu- putting a bucket of water. No, no, no. One bucket is, is too small. Imagine putting a um, no GP, GP tank. 50 liters. Go and pour it in an ocean. It will make no impact. That is what you want to do. If I can add my righteousness to it. It will help what Christ has done. It will help it. It will not be good force. No. Now hear this. God did not make covenant with you. No. Covenant. Keeping God. No. There was no covenant. No. It, okay. When was the covenant made? No. When? When, when, was, when, when was it made? Ta uluwa. What's covenant in Yoruba? Allah will magia move me. There is nothing like that. A covenant is when you, you must play a part. I must play a part. And then we have results. God didn't make that with you. No father makes covenant with his children. No father does that. Say, if you can be a good boy, I'll pay your school fees. That is that's a bad father. If you knew, you will not take care of him. Don't give back to him. Don't give back to him. That's a bad father. What magic is that one? The only covenant that was made was made on your behalf. And it was between God and God. By two immutable things. Which is important for God to lie. <laughs> and the covenant is favoring you. See, this, is a, this is a covenant I will, now, I, will now, I, will now, I will now make with the house of Israel. I will write my laws in their heart. Were you there when it was being made? Did he make covenant with you? Say, there are sins and iniquities. Will I remember no more? Does that look like covenant with a man and another man? It's between God and God. Made on your behalf. Hallelujah. So, now go, go, go to verse 6, please. Verse 6. Verse 6. Just as Abraham believed who? So, the part you play is believe. Accept what has been done for you. And it was what? Accounted to him for what? Righteousness. Move please. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Verse 8. And the scripture foreseen that God would justify the Gentile by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you, in you, shall all the nations be blessed. Verse 9. Verse 9. So then, those who are of faith are blessed. We believe in Abraham. Verse 10, please. Now, look at verse 10. Carefully, please. Carefully, please. From here. Say, for as many as are of the works of the law. They are what? Under a curse. Why? Because curse is everyone that does not continue in all the books, not the things that are written in the book of the Lord to do them. 
Choye. Choye. I mean, 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 I simple, but we make it complex. Look at, let's read it again. For as many as are of the works of the law. If you sit down with the works of the law, say you are what? Under a curse. Why? Why? It says because curse is everyone that does not continue to in all the things that are written in the book of the law to do them. Meaning that if you omit one of the six hundred what? Ten, is it that's not eighteen? Eighteen laws. It's not ten commandment though. That one, that one is a movie title. Six hundred eighteen. If you remove one from it, you are under a curse. Verse 11. But that no one. How many people? No one is what? Justified. In the sight of God by the law. No one, no one, no one, no one. God, look at me. You want to pray? I pay my tithe. I give my offering. I am faithful. I stop lying. God will be like, this one doesn't even know what I'm talking about at all. It's not there at all. God's goodness is not, it's not for good boys. It's for God boys. You miss me? God's goodness is not for good boys. It's for God boys. But that no one... I'm only speaking English to say what Paul said. <laughs> I'm not adding my own tweet. But that no one is what? Justified. In the sight of God by the law. It is evident. You see that the just... The just shall live by what? By faith. Verse 12. Yet the law is not of faith. But the man that does them shall live by the best thing, please. Best thing. Christ. Look at this one. Let me, let me round up here. Let me round up here. We have not even scratched the surface of the world at all. We have not even touched anything. Let me, let me round up here. Wow. Look at this. Christ as what? From Hallelujah. Christ has redeemed us. What does redeem mean? To pay a ransom. Right? So if you make the, if if you pledge in church, I'll, I'll say that ah, please come and redeem your pledge. Right? So, this is what you did. Pastor, can you come, sir? This is my pledge in church. Look at me. The pledge is, Pastor, I will give a million naira next month. So I take one million naira check. I give it to you. You give me back my pledge. That's redemption. Do you understand? This is my debt. As long as he has this with him, I am owing something. But the moment I bring what I promised, am I under a promise anymore? No. I give it to you, I have redeemed my pledge. This is, a pro- eh? this is a promise. This is a promise. This is a pledge. So there is redemption. So Jesus, Jesus, now, you, 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 Let's put this first. You were owing debt, right? You are owing God. You cannot live without lying. It is sin, two four seven, right? Take, right? Then somebody became us. I'm quoting Bible. He became us, and he went to God. You ask him. What's it happen? Uh, he's owing. Uh-huh. So how then they pay? The only way to pay for debt is by debt. Do you get that? How are you getting it? Yes, I was owing debt. Because when you sin, the Bible says the wages of sin is what? Is debt. You just have to die. I was owing debt. And so, 
How do you pay for debt? By blood, by debt. So Jesus died. There is nothing like on the cross of Calvary, shedding your blood for me. It did not happen, no. They don't shed blood on the cross, so they shed blood in the Holy of Holies. And the one on earth, in, in this of Moses, is the, is, the, is the one that looked like the one in heaven. So Jesus, Jesus died on the cross, carried his blood, and now went to heaven. As we go to heaven, he was still on earth. He met Mary Magdalene and was like, Jesus! He said, no, don't touch me. Don't touch me until I ascend to my father and your father, to your God and my God. Meaning that if you touch me, you have spoiled sacrifice. That means that I am not only taking my blood, I am taking Mary Magdalene to heaven. So Jesus went to heaven. That was Jesus' second, second coming. <laughs> this was, uh, so there is second coming. There is third coming. Because when he died on the cross, finish, he went to heaven and then he dropped blood. And Jesus gave him your life. But he didn't give him your life like Cynthia's normal life. He gave him the life of Jesus. And it's called eternal life. Amen? You can't work for it too. Only grace can bring it. And the moment you now receive life, you see that, that the way of sin is that, but what? You now have the gift of God. Is what? Eternal life. Do you understand that now? Are you sure about that? Now look at this very well. It says, Christ has redeemed us. From what? Thank you very much, sir. He redeemed us from what? He went to pay for the cost of the law. You could not fulfill the law. You pay for it. Having become what? Because cost is everyone that hangs on the tree. Jesus Christ finished everything. Ah, he was finishing everything. He was like, hey, there's a part too. This guy has been cost too. I must take away the cost. Say, let's, so let me choose where to die. In Israel, when you die on the cross, it's a death of, 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 of the cost. So Jesus chose where to die. He died on the cross. And where he died was where the bones was buried. Meaning that when he was dying, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was redeeming you from the cost that God placed on the land for Adam's sake. Hallelujah. And so Christ has redeemed us from the cost of the Lord. Having become what? A cost for us. Cost is everyone that hangs on a tree. Why? That what? The blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. And we might have what? The promise of the Spirit. True faith. Please go back. Go back, please. Now, so there are three stages. Stage one Christ has redeemed us from what? The cause of the law. Have you now? Stage one. Have you become a cause for us? The moment you are redeemed from a cause, what happens next? Blessings of Abraham come upon, upon you, Gentiles. You will know where Abraham no born. You have born Odudua. Odudua. No Odudua now. Father of Yuba. What's the father of the Igbos? Amadiwa Abi, I don't know. But I know Yoruba, Odudua. You are no more source of Odudua. You are no source of Abraham. The moment Jesus redeemed from the cause of the law, he made you, he gave you the blessings of Abraham. If you were not redeemed from the cause of the law, there is no way you will have the blessings of Abraham. Am I right? Talk to you, am I right? Now, there is something that is superior to the blessings of Abraham. Look at it. It says that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. How many of you have received the promise of the Spirit through faith? I have received it. It's not speaking in tongues, it's salvation. <laughs> It's salvation. The moment you become born again, the Holy Ghost comes into your life and tabernacles there. So there are three stages. Stage one, cost. He redeemed us from what? Cost. Have you now? Stage two, blessing of Abraham come upon us. Stage three, the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, the moment you pass stage one and you are now in stage two, blessing of Abraham has come upon you. Can you be cursed again? I don't know if, if, if you can answer my question very well. Please, can you be cursed again? What if somebody curses you? Will it work? You, you didn't get me. What if somebody will, will it work? What if they have, they have cursed your forefathers and it's, it's not affecting other people in your family? Can it affect you? 
Because you have received the blessing of who? Abraham. The blessing of Abraham says, I will cause he that causes you. It is a, it is a demo. He, meaning the devil. That means that even if the devil himself comes to curse you, it cannot work. Say, I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse he that causes you. You move from being... Up, from, now, let's make it stage four. Four stages. Stage one, you are under the curse of what? The law. Say two, Christ redeemed from God of the law. Say three, that's the best of Abraham. Say four, the promise of the spiritual faith. Now, the moment you receive the promise of the spiritual faith, you cannot be cursed again. You cannot go back to stage one. You can, it's not possible anymore. The only way it's possible is if you accept it. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed this morning? Are you sure about that? Can you pray in the Holy Ghost? Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Show you immensely impacted by God's word. We cannot wait for the fruit that you will bear upward with a word that is taking root deeply and downward in your spirit, man. We are the kings of the youth expression of Foster Gospel Church or really Agege, Lagos, Nigeria. Join us every Sunday, 8 a.m. at 54 stroke 56 Old Road, or really Agege, Lagos. And every Thursday on mixlr.com forward slash kings up. We are 100% Jesus, no adjectives. You are celebrated.